Now the next two reactions technically don't have to involve the side chains of benzene. Uh, these don't actually even have to involve benzene, but uh, they have a huge relevance here because they're uh, super important for synthesis in this chapter. So I'm going to call it side chain reduction, and there's two of them. And essentially they accomplish the same thing, Clemenson reduction and the Wolf-Kishner reduction. So, and I'm not going to take the time to go through either mechanism here. Uh, now technically the Clemenson reduction, maybe you got a small chance of that being uh, something you got to know, uh, but for most of you, you probably don't. And then the Wolf-Kishner reduction, uh, this is usually a mechanism if we're going to teach it to you, we're going to teach it to you later on in the semester uh, in either the aldehyde or ketone chapter or possibly the amine chapter, um, but usually not here. So I'm not going to take the time to cover either mechanism here. Um, but in this case, the Clemenson reduction, we're using a uh, zinc amalgam. So zinc with mercury is your zinc amalgam, and also then with HCl and water. So and in this case, you notice it is a complete reduction of the carbonyl. Uh, it's important to note this only works for ketones and aldehydes. So we're, you know, if we try to use this in the future for esters or something like that, it's not going to work. So for ketones or aldehydes. Uh, and this is important because with a friedel crafts acylation, something looking like this, guys, off in your product. And then you can completely completely reduce it to get the corresponding alkane. So important reaction for synthesis in this chapter. So and it turns out the Wolf-Kishner reaction will do the same thing, totally different pathway, totally different mechanism. And again, we're not going to take the time to cover it now. Uh, but here we're going to use hydrazine, which is here N2H4 or NH2, NH2, uh, under basic conditions with heat. Uh, and that Wolf-Kishner does exactly the same thing. And again, it's also specific to ketones and aldehydes. Uh, and again, they don't actually have to be in the side chain of a benzene, but again, the relevance in this chapter. Um, one of the big important reasons uh, for synthesis purposes we have this is if you recall, we had trouble with certain Friedel Crafts alkylations making certain products. So and the idea is we're going to have trouble making this minor product right here. And if we do this reaction, we're going to go through a primary carbocation. But that would rearrange to a secondary carbocation via hydride shift. And that's why your major product ends up being the rearranged one. So the question is then, how could we make this guy our major product? Well, we wouldn't do it through a Friedel Crafts alkylation. We'd do it through a Friedel Crafts acylation, since we don't have to worry about carbocation rearrangements there. And then we'd follow it up with either the Clemenson or the Wolf Kishner reduction. So if we take a look here, so say we wanted to form that exact product, what we'd end up doing is we'd use the corresponding acyl chloride with your Lewis acid catalyst AlCl3 here. So in the result, would be an acylation with no rearrangement there. So, and then we want to follow that up again with either the Clemenson or the Wolf Kishner. And I'll just use the Clemenson here. So, and some people leave the water off here, by the way, same diff. Uh, but we got this product, it's the major product that we couldn't get in a good yield up here through an alkylation. We can now do it through an acylation. So, this again, really important for synthesis purposes. Now on the last side, I kind of made it seem like maybe the Clemenson and the Wolf-Kishner reductions are interchangeable. And sometimes they are, and on the last slide they were. Uh, but there are places where you could see the difference. And uh, some professors will cover this and some won't. So you'll have to kind of gauge whether or not you're responsible for this. Uh, but big thing here in the Clemenson reduction is that it involves HCl. And HCl can add across an alkene. So if you've got a molecule that's an alkene, we're not just going to reduce the ketone here to an alkane, but we're also going to do a Markovnikov addition of H and Cl across the alkene as well if we use the Clemenson reagents. So with the Wolf-Kishner down here, you don't have to worry about them reacting with an alkene. So if you're going to do a reduction of a ketone or aldehyde, you've got to ask yourself, do I have an alkene and do I want to add HCl across it? Yes or no. If I do, well then the Clemenson's your guy. If I don't though, you better be using the Wolf-Kishner instead. Now we just saw that HCl here can react with alkenes as part of the Clemenson reduction reagents, uh, but we also got to worry about the Wolf-Kishner having KOH. Now KOH is both a strong nucleophile and a strong base. As a strong nucleophile, we might have to worry about it doing SN2, and as a strong base, we might have to worry about it doing E2. Uh, so that's something to be concerned with. And notice to do SN2 or ET, you've got to have a good leaving group. So if you've got an alkyl halide, this might be a concern of yours. So in this case, I've got a primary alkyl halide. Uh, and so SN2 is much more likely. And as you look here, you can see that an OH has replaced the bromine here. Now, we definitely did reduce the ketone to an alkane, uh, like we should with the Wolf-Kishner reduction. But we also did SN2 here, replacing the bromine with an OH. Uh, we didn't have to worry about elimination here because the only beta carbon we had didn't have any hydrogens. But in principle, you might have to worry about E2 also happening in such a, uh, such a case with the, uh, the Wolf-Kishner reagents. Now, we didn't have to worry about this 
uh, with our Clemenson reagents, and notice we still have the bromine in our product there. So don't have any strong base or strong nucleophile present uh, in our Clemenson reduction reagents, so no worries.